from the dawn of time we came, moving silently down through the centuries. Living many secret lives, struggling to reach the time of the gathering, when the few who remain will battle to the last. No one has ever known we were among you. Until now. Everyone who loves watching 80s sci-fi movies, probably fondly remembers Highlander movie and if they are a fan, then multiple sequels and television series that came later. In this video, we will look at Highlander phenomenon and discuss how and why so many of these things were made. Peter S. Davis began his career as a Wall Street lawyer and launched his own firm in his 20s before heading to Hollywood in 1977. Before Highlander he produced New Line Cinema's first film, stunts starring Robert Forster, among other films. Highlander began as an overlooked script written by UCLA undergrad Gregory Wyden. According to Wyden, the idea of the story was basically a combination of a riff on film The Duelists, Guy Wants to Finish a Duel started years ago. Wyden's original draft of the script differed significantly from the film. The initial story was darker and more violent. Director Russell Mulcahy was flipping through a magazine and saw a photograph of Christopher Lambert from his recent role as the title hero of Greystoke, The Legend of Tarzan, Lord of the Apes. Mulcahy remembers that he said, This is the guy. His eyes had a timeless quality. The fact he couldn't speak English didn't really matter. So we ended up with a Frenchman playing a Scotsman, and Sean Connery as the Spanish Egyptian immortal who trains him. We didn't bother changing Sean's accent. This was Sean Connery. These guys had been around for centuries. They could have picked up accents from wherever. The budget was just $13 million so it was guerrilla style filmmaking. There was very little CGI in those days. For the fights, the crew strapped car batteries to the actors' legs and wired them up so they'd spark when a sword struck. After about three takes, the sword handles would get really hot and they would have to stop. The US release was a disaster. It had one of the worst posters ever, a black and white close-up of Christopher. It looked like he had acne. The film grossed $2.4 million on its opening weekend and ended with $5.9 million in the US. Internationally, the film grossed $12.9 million. But at the premiere in France, there were 30-foot cutouts of Sean and Christopher all the way down the Champs-Élysées. The audience went apeshit. It became an enormous hit in Europe. Then Highlander found a rabid fan base in the US when it came out on VHS. Highlander 2 was released five years after the first movie. The first Highlander lost money after it was released, bringing in only $12.8 million worldwide on a $16 million budget. The movie was a huge hit on VHS rental market and due to good performance in the international markets, new movie franchise was born. Originally Highlander producers saw no reason to make another film. Foreign distributors brought up the idea for a sequel again and again. When are you doing this? There's a real desire to see another Highlander film, they would tell Highlander producers. We said the movie ended and everyone is dead. They said you'll figure something out. And figure something out they did. Everything seemed to go wrong with Highlander 2 from the start. The first Highlander cost just $19 million. The second film's budget was originally $30 million. During the making of the film, everything cost more than expected. Sean Connery did not want to go make a cheapo sequel to a movie where he was killed off, unless he was making a ton of money for it. His quote for Highlander 2 was $3 million for a week of work. The move of filming from New York to Argentina was a mistake due to hyperinflation crisis that hit the country. Everything ended up costing more than if filming took place in the US. In addition to this UK just recently went to war with Argentina over Falkland Islands, so the Argentine crew was already not in the mood to work for a bunch of Brits post-war. Russell Mulcahy later claimed he was signed on to direct the film without his knowledge. At the end, insurance company took over the editing of the film. According to the director the film that was released just wasn't finished. Russell Mulcahy famously walked out of the premiere for the film. When Highlander 2 came out. It was panned by the critics for large plot holes, poorly developed characters, confusing story structure, abundance of subplots, and bad editing. It grossed only just over $15 million in the US. In 1992, a television spin-off was developed, entitled Highlander, the series. 
French production company Gaumont Television bought the rights to the series to have it produced in syndication in America with a local crew, a groundbreaking move at the time. Highlander marked the first time a French production company was creatively involved in a show intended for the American market. Christopher Lambert did not wish to do television, though he agreed that there should be a series, and originally Connor McLeod was to be the protagonist. After Lambert declined, and because there were still films being made with the Connor character, it was decided at Adrian Paul's request to have the series focus on another McLeod. Lambert agreed to appear in the pilot and pass the torch to Adrian Paul. They were only able to afford Lambert for three days of filming. He declined to do any future episodes. There were six seasons of the show produced. The series was an international hit. 